Yo, my dude. What up? What up? It's been a good week. Um, how you been, man? I've been good, dude. It's just, you know, coming to the end of the the week and getting ready for the weekend. Getting ready to have some fun. How does one do that right now? Uh, well, there's a lot of ways, but one of my favorite ways was something we talked about last week, and that was getting into the uh, the comic book side of things, getting away from the screens, digging deep into mm -hmm. the the arts and the the writing and the and the drawings and the colors. So we want to dive into some stories, you know, the good old 100%. pastimes. The good old pastimes. I like that. That's yeah. that's right on. So. Um... What are we going to be so like? What are we gonna be doing in this show? Let's talk about that because like I think last last week we came on and we winged it. We're calling this episode one, so this is fucking official. This means right. that like we're starting a show, which we've been yes. probably talking about for a long time, centered I mean, around a mutual love that started probably for Transformers and other things like Final Fantasy. You're way more into the graphic novel universe. Like I'm a surface level guy that has a lot of interest in it. And right. I'm, like, from your point of view, what are we trying to achieve with this show? Why the fuck are we uh, doing this? <laughs> I mean, we're doing this to kind of show that uh, there's a lot of depth to the whole, uh, you know, graphic novel and comic book universe. It's not all just superheroes and uh, capes. What we're going to kind of go into today is a story that definitely takes a different route uh, away from that. Definitely a little bit darker. And sometimes people need that kind of gritty stuff to kind of really uh, uh, get into stuff. So, you know, it's not all Superman and, and uh, America's greatest hero and, and all of that. Sometimes right. we can really explore the uh, dark psyche and have a lot of fun doing it. Um, and I just like want to, alert people to like you know there it, it's even outside of that there's crime there's uh fantasy there's pretty much every genre out there and you could really get into like authors and artists and really start stumbling down rabbit holes it's a lot a lot of fun yeah i i couldn't agree more thomas what up um i couldn't agree more about how fun it's been so like my perspective and thank you for doing this at a time when we needed it is like it's interesting where like, I feel like I'm hanging out with my friends more than I've been able to hang out in a long time because our lives are like mad simple right now. So like right. we just literally, I went from 12 hours of streaming to streaming the NFL draft while streaming on Twitch so that we had like 12 people in one thing watching the draft and then all this shit happened on Twitch. And then we were like still like, okay, let's do another fucking thing. Let's have get up and join on the show. And like now that I have all this time, I've been able to actually dive into this world that like you've coveted and kind of preached for for a long time. And as someone who like has an appetite for that shit, but like didn't have the opportunity to do it at this stage, it's been dope. It's been dope. Yeah. So first of all, thank you, bro. And hopefully we get more people to do this with you. Of course. Yeah. No, uh, one of my, uh, I love like just spreading the knowledge, so to say, onto people. And, uh, you know, there's nothing like getting somebody excited over a book. When I worked in the comic book shop, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's awesome to recommend a book to somebody and then come back and be like, yo, man, I love that book. So, uh, what's next, you know, and they just trust you to kind of point you in like that direction. You just ask them what they're into. It's something as simple as that, you know, like, what do you like? And there is something for everything. So, uh, and I've always loved, uh, doing that for people and, you know, hearing books that they've loved turning DC, uh, sworn people over to Marvel stories or vice versa is always a lot of fun too. Mm. Like you get those people, they're like, "Oh, I never would read a Marvel book," and you're like, "Dude, do me a favor, just read this one story." Like, I've never met anybody that's ever said that, but like, yeah. you would know better than I would. Yeah, no, there's there's strong strong allegiances out there, and you know, we uh, us nerds, we all take our fandom very very yeah. seriously. For so sure. it's uh, <laughs> you got to be careful sometimes where you tread. So so I mean. I think part of the in, the purpose of, you know, kicking this thing off um, and figuring out where, like, our show comes from, I kind of just got inspired where I want to know a couple of things about your history in comics. So, right. first comic you ever had? Uh, like, the one first of, one that you remember? The One of the first ones I ever did purchase, I always wanted it so bad, and it's crazy because I got it for $15 back when uh, my grandma took me to uh her uh salon and there was a comic book store next door in college park atomic comics and i walked over there and they had the very first issue of spider-man where uh venom first appeared and mm. it's with it's That's with spider-man on the uh black suit and um i still have it i could whip it out but uh it's uh whip it out bro all right give me one second <laughs> 
actually. We're going off cuff. Visual aids kill it. So one of my uh, pride and joys of uh, my Spider-Man collection is that I have every single issue. Well, I have the first issue ever that the black suit appears what? in. Uh, graded at a 9.6 so this is the very first time that spider-man ever wore the black bring suit. that a little bit bit, bit more center to mm, other way other way yeah 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 yeah. towards you yeah fuck yeah, yeah. so uh that's one of my pride and joys right there i love what's that the book. year on that because you can just tell that it's like is, what is that uh, like 1985 i believe is what it is sick and uh yeah you got dude you got frogger 2 being advertised for atari on the back <laughs> Bring it closer to you. Yeah, there you go. There's a little glare, but from the computer yeah. screen, I can't really see it. But yeah, still. but um, so this one right here was kind of the first one that I ever bought. Is it glaring? Yeah, it is. Try to yeah, give it a little bit of shade or something if you can. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah, sick. Three hundred so, was it issue three hundred? Yep, that was issue three hundred. And uh, Todd McFarlane, the guy who drew Spawn, this was kind of like his last run. As uh, as it was so funny because when they brought him on, because Todd McFarlane, who did Spawn, actually created Venom, like it was his idea, and uh, he wanted to draw the red and blues so bad for Spider-Man that this is the last issue that Spider-Man wears the black suit because uh, Mary Jane hates it and he burns it at the very end and breaks out the red and blues. So that's that's how so we're we did we're, it we're digging into the comic verse in areas where we didn't even expect to go, but like it just yeah. it's episode one, so we got to kind of know the origin story of you know Webhead yeah. and all the you know things that got you into this. Exactly. I mean, this is this one right here, issue thirty three of Spider Man. Bring it closer to uh, you again. This is uh Towards Steve. You. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Steve Steve Ditko and uh, Stan Lee wrote this book. And uh, this is like, this book's from, you know, the 60s. This is issue, Spider-Man has 850-something issues. This is issue 33. Jeez. One of the most famous ones. <laughs> so like, what's that, 33, Patrick Ewing? So what's that also worth at this point, issue 33? I, I mean, that book, like, is not in the greatest condition. I mostly got it just for the meaning of the issue and for... You know, uh, just the Steve Ditko art who passed at that year when I bought it. Right. And uh, so it was just, it's just a cool piece of Spider Man history to have. It's also like one of, considered one of the famous like moments where you saw he's in the water and he's got the big thing above him. That's like one of the big moments is when he lifts that up. And they redid that in the movie. That's in Homecoming. Yeah. That's dope. So, okay, so Spider-Man was the first one that started the Genesis, and, yep, then, that, you, and then you worked uh, at a comic store starting when? Uh, that was about three years ago. I worked there for about two years, and uh, that was just awesome because I had free reign pretty much over everything in terms of, like, whatever I wanted to read. I could just take that home with me, crush it, and, uh, you know, go back and read whatever I wanted. It was, it was a beautiful experience, so I... Uh, got that's where i really expanded my knowledge on just being able to get a hold of anything like with access you know just i just crushed everything manga you know dc stuff even stuff i wasn't right. reading like just because it would you know it, the started, environment right like that right. probably also allowed you to expand your horizon of like different types of comic universes and right because everybody that walked into the store isn't into what i'm into and i had to be able to be like well you know well maybe you should try this then if that's what you're into so i kind of had to stick my fingers in all the pies and and like read a little bit of everything to kind of always be on my toes when somebody's like i don't know what to read but this is you know i like fantasy what should i read you know, right. so I'm like, oh, well, this is like my go-to fantasy book right here, and blah blah blah. Yeah, so, that makes a ton of sense. And, and like yeah. we had, we talked about this on the first like, what was it, episode zero? I guess it doesn't count. Yeah. But like the fact Patient that like zero. I have a problem with these comic universes because I like to go chronologically and feel like I don't miss anything. So I like, right. need to be pointed in the right direction to understand that like, hey, if you like just get this part of the story, it's gonna be enough. Like if someone co-signs it for me like that, it's it's dope. But otherwise, right. if I'm left to my own devices, I'm like, all right, because I'm starting start at Spider-Man issue one. And it's like, it's yeah. going to be a long fucking time until I get to another comic. I got 800 right. to go, you know? Right, exactly. And that, you know, that was, that's one of the good things too about like, you know, you get somebody that comes in and is like, yo, I want to read like 
a, a story where spider-man fights like sandman you know like you're right. like oh okay well there's like three great like spider-man versus sandman stories like here they all are like or whoever so it, that's they make it like jumping on so easy because they want you they want to hook that audience in and just keep getting you on and like i was telling last week each like episode or uh arc is what they call it is about five issues long and you get a story in that whole five issues yeah so i mean it's been fun man so we started this thing i think just like for reference my interest in this is like uh i am not as well versed in comics so having someone to point me in the right direction is dope having my homie who is like my college roommate that i'm doing that with and we're like doing this consistently is awesome um wow mike's on and we got torres in the chat now too so so <laughs> shameless plug for torres's upcoming segment i'm putting him on blast now so he can't bank back out he's developed a character his name is loin and he's oh. going to be doing late night with loin from the bathtub Popping. oh my god yeah it's yeah. like uh the john lovett's uh late night with yeah. the cock we're doing a 2 a.m segment with him we got shit on deck with o'toole it's about to get crazy late night i'm trying to put on put the heathens on blast on late night so we can kick it off with the comics and we'll keep it actually kind of pg-13 but um unless people want to get wild i don't give a fuck so yeah. my interest really is that since we've gone into quarantine bro like so i mean like first thing and i know it's not a big deal but like you know this like Shave the shave the dome piece. You know what I'm saying? Wow! Holy Bro, shit! I don't have that commitment. Joint. That's like a zero blade. Damn, like zero son. Blade. It's been this fucking I... thing where I'm basically like, I basically have realized that like with everything that's going on, I'm losing like any level of pride in terms of like what I think is right, and I'm just gonna be <laughs> open to everything. And right. so one of the things that I've been doing, I've like yo stimulus we started, and that's super dope. But I've been fucking trying yoga. I've been fucking trying fucking different kinds of recipes i've been fucking watching wow for the first time since you used to play in college i've been playing yeah. video games i'm fucking reading comics now like i'm just trying to do as much as i fucking can because all we have is time so for me it's like i've always been into this kind of shit my first comics were spawn was the first thing i was ever really into honestly i was Great huge choice. into spawn and then beyond that i was really big in x-men and obviously like wolverine was my guy so like that was yeah. my thing and like okay. Gambit was like second and then like got ruined by what they try to fucking do in movies and shit like that later on in life where I was like, I don't know, I should have yep. never gone down that path. Needless to say, it's dope to have a guide. So I'm like the fucking yeah. noob and the Padawan. You're the fucking apprentice and Jedi. And like, let's just fucking start doing as much as we can have fun with graphic novels. And I think ultimately you also had an idea about partnering with comic shops going forward and how we can potentially help them in this process too. You want to talk about that? Yeah, hundred percent. I mean that uh, <laughs> local comic book shops are a big, big part of like what even gets more content created, and a lot of like uh, the biggest artists in the industry right now are are having uh, you know uh, donations of their art. Well, they're auctioning off their art to to donate to local comic book shops to stay afloat. So uh, we'd like to get some local shops on here and just have them talk about what they're doing. Uh, during Corona, uh, because a lot of these shops are offering, you know, delivery to your house, they'll mail it anywhere that you are. Um, and, you know, they just want to get you that good, uh, that goodness. I know my local comic book shops even setting up Zoom meetings so you can walk through the store still with them and kind of like shop around and, you know, see what you want to buy. So we want to get those local shops on blast and kind of give them the maybe outreach that they're not getting with what they're doing right now but you know just to spread the word to them and anybody who's trying to get into this stuff you know if they're around you you can just call them and they hook you up yeah that's fire i would love to be able to like have some of those store owners on here with us hopefully we can promote some of them hopefully we can kind of like do whatever we can to like just continue to support the communities that we're doing stuff around you know what i mean yeah so right. so uh we'll get up working on that we know why we're doing this, which is just mainly have fucking fun. And then you're going to basically steer me and everybody else to the <laughs> comic universe. And yes. hopefully we'll have some other people that'll do that with us. Um, Mike had a question about if we can cover Spawn, Spawn in this, uh, in this, in this, po uh, whatever podcast, whatever the fuck we're calling it, this show. Um, obviously I think that that's on the table at some point. Hell yeah. Uh, definitely. Al yeah. Simmons is, uh, one of my favorites for sure. hundred percent. And the question uh, is, are you I'll pumped on Disney plus <laughs> and old cartoons and the old cartoons that they have? 
Yeah, I saw they brought they're putting uh, X Men the animated series on there. Saw that today. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I just I, I want to go through um, the Spider Man from the animated series from the old days on Fox. That was always my my joint. Yeah, for sure. I also saw um, that basically like they so they have like all of like the Simpsons too, and I started watching the like, Mandalorian for the first time, and that was fire. Like I don't know why I didn't get it, but I got it in quarantines because my daughter is like obsessed with all the old movies, so we should watch like. Toy Story for the first time in Aladdin today. Yeah, yeah, Aladdin yeah. popping. I had to call my dad because that was an OG Sega game. That was the one that we had to beat like every couple weeks. The yeah, OG Aladdin hard. Sega game was one of the best fucking early games ever. It was hard too, man. I would love to play yeah, that could... shit on here if we could figure out how to fucking do that. Oh, uh, 100% could do yeah. it. But dude, it's so funny. I go back and play those some of those old games, and that shit's hard, man. I'm like, damn, like how was I was actually good at this as a kid. And it's just like, yeah, right? well, yeah, sat there for hours upon hours, like doing it. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. I used to play that shit with my dad. We used to rent it for like months at a time. Um, so back to business. What did we read as our first assignment? Dr. All right. So uh, first assignment was uh, one of my favorite uh, books of all time. Favorite series called uh, Luther Strode. But it's a three-part segment. And we read the first part out of it called The Legend of Luther Strode. The entire series goes the legend of luther strode or excuse me the strange talents of luther strode the legend of luther strode and then the legacy is the final one but anyways uh luther strode is definitely a very darker darker look on uh the kind of i guess superhuman uh genre and uh it's very ultra violent and brutal if you're like not into like people ex literally exploding into uh bones and brain <laughs> then it's probably not the best book for you but uh it is uh it has great writing i've met the author um in person a couple of times i actually met the artist as well i have the book uh signed by both of them and i got the author to doodle a little uh bring picture. the doodle up close bring the doodle up close let's see that <laughs> I got the bring a little it more dude. towards over over yeah 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 yeah, yeah. a little bit more of, uh, towards the center sorry the screen is yeah there we go cool yeah and uh so that uh trad Moore is the artist and one of the, one of my favorite things about this book just in terms of like the art was you get to see the artist's uh style evolve throughout the entire series um which was really cool to like see because it took a while for the whole thing to come out but um it was interesting to kind of watch his art style change over the years as like new issues came out for the story so so before we like start to dive in i want to say like from the noob opinion my thing was i was like look man it's obvious that we're going to get on here and we'll talk about spider-man and x-man x-men and batman and shit of that nature and there's like things that are more commercial that we want to want to you know read and have fun with but i was kind of like let's get out of dc and marvel and figure out what we can explore that i just never would have found otherwise and that's like the whole purpose of the show it's like right. i would never have found luther strode if it wasn't for you now yeah can you talk about image and just a little backstory on them and like yeah. how they fit into the comic universe yeah uh image, the ones that, that's like the, the publisher right like that's like the studio correct. and yeah. uh image has one of the coolest stories of like all time how they came to be basically a group of artists at marvel uh todd mcfarland jim lee rob liefeld uh, a few others they were just like fed up with marvel uh and how marvel was running things and uh, how they were not getting paid so little or, or uh, not enough. And so they all got together and were like, yo, like, let's just jump ship. Like, let's just get out of here and like start our own publisher where we make the rules. You get paid like, you know, they, they came up with a pay peer, uh, pay scheme that's still not scheme, but pay uh, whatever. Uh, that still program. holds up to this day program um yeah. and basically so one of my favorite parts about the story is they leave marvel they all get together like yo like fuck marvel like we're getting out of here like let's fucking go to dc and like tell them like what we fucking think and like so they go they they dc's like right across so they start they walk over to dc and like everybody's like so hyped they're like oh my god like fucking jim lee's here who just finished up like x-men todd mcfarlane like the best spider-man ar artist of all time like our coming over here they're gonna draw for us like this is gonna be fucking amazing and like so they get everybody in the boardroom everybody's like all hype and they're like 
like they're like all right so like you're coming to work for us and they're like what like no like we're here to tell you that like we're all starting our own like thing and like we're gonna be like the best like thing in comics and they're like uh like everybody in the boardroom's like what the fuck and like so they leave they start image so they uh, wait 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 they just went to put their dicks on the table yeah they just went to just be like yo we're like we're we're here now like we're the new force like because this was like marvel's all-star you know rob liefeld created deadpool jim lee has the most legendary x-men run of all time that's like all the 90s art from right. x-men that we grew right, up right. on that's made it what it is yeah yeah exactly and like um and you know mcfarlane was doing spider-man so it's like the, the biggest books in marvel like the best artists that were drawing it just were like yeah we're out like we're doing our own thing and like they launched image with like spawn and wildcats and like you know it like to this day i think still holds records for like the most like big the biggest like launch of all time for like for like their first starter books like three million like spawn so it was crazy yeah so so that's funny that you say because you know as someone who was into spawn like as a kid like i was i wasn't doing all the backstory like we do now you know what i mean like we have mm-hmm. documentaries on this stuff it's all well documented you do a lot of research because the internet like back then you would just look at a character you felt that vibe it would bring you to a certain place you would just read it but in looking at luther you could tell that the level of gore in luther is linked to the lineage of spawn pretty quickly yeah yeah it definitely is no holds bar at all and uh it brings back that old 90s feel of uh they're gonna do whatever the fuck they want and if you have a problem with it they don't give a shit yeah. and uh it's it's very in your face and smash mouth reading and it's got some of the greatest uh drawn scenes ever the uh when we start going through it the one of the big spreads the whole reason i even got into this book was in the comic book shop i was in they had the original pencils and ink of like the two page spread and i was staring huh. up that, on the wall and i was like and the one of the guys that worked there came up to me and i was like what is that from and he was like that's luther strode and i was like show me that and and like that's how i got into the like book huh so this is so, so it's an insider type of like it's got like a yeah. cult following i know for a fact that it did well and exceeded everybody's expectations like they were just trying to break even on it basically yeah. it was a passion project right yeah and, exactly yeah. It, it wasn't even supposed to have a second part and you know people just like freaked out about it and uh so they wrote a second part and then it took a while for the third part to come out it got delayed a bunch and it was tilting but it eventually came out and you know they finished the story right okay yeah. cool. and that's one of the good things about it it doesn't have a million issues there's you know it has an ending to it it's yeah you know it, it's, it's the 18 issues all together <laughs> to be fair man that's like one of the things that like i actually enjoy about this is like while it's still super fantastical the thing that fucks me up the most about the universe is, is when like different characters start coming in that are the same character because right. so so my 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 issue is this like which shows like Westworld where like it's mm-hmm. so fantastical that like what they do is they strip away limitation right it, it fucks me up like at least in Game of Thrones like it is fantasy but like there's things that can and cannot happen you know what I right. mean like White Walkers can fucking die you know what right. I mean as can yeah. everybody else like the thought that like in Westworld it's like oh this person died but then they didn't because it's a robot and it's in the future and then it's in the past and I'm just like I can't so that is a problem for me as it relates right. to some of the different characters, just because and I'm not trying to say like I'm fucking simple, but like, like <laughs> I, I, I'm thinking linearly about like, I'm on an arc with this person. You know what I mean? Like right. I, I like a yeah. story that has an arc and it makes sense in that world, in that, in that whole capacity, I'm getting fucking hate uh, in the chat because Westworld is real. And it's like, yeah, dude, like maybe it is, but they lost me before I could get to the point of realizing what the fuck was real because there was like, they stripped, they stripped all semblance of, like uh consequence right well it's definitely uh de- if for anybody that's caught up on the third season it's definitely way out the uh it shouldn't even be called westworld anymore to be honest <laughs> yeah right. they leave that whole thing whatever yeah, yeah yeah so but uh i mean i i do i do enjoy that i love ed harris you but know. does it make sense though where i'm coming from in terms of that struggle like do you hear that yeah no oh no i, I definitely from other people that. i mean like do you right. hear that from other people too yeah no uh my, britney's dad like hates <laughs> so i mean totally... i don't hate it i love it i just well just like, like he just oh, didn't, shit, he just didn't get into spider-mans it. what do i do with that right now that's a whole different beast <laughs> that's my po- that's the point i'm getting to over oversaturation was a, a big problem uh 
it's happened several times uh one one time in the 80s it was so extreme that dc did an event that killed off like all the all the uh people and that that were like extra that you know nobody was really caring about to kill that oversaturation and then a few years ago marvel did it where they took all the universes and had them explode and there was only one universe and only like the cool people from the other universes came over to like survive yeah that's tough yeah so yeah, that's like tough, that's but... that, that's how they were like all right we're done with the multiple universe thing like we're just combining it all and nonetheless we're gonna get into that and i'm like totally down with that but i'm just saying like that's been a thing where like this clear arc of luther was pretty dope you know we're still right. reading some of it um yep. but we should probably get into it yeah let's get into it man let's get into right, some cool. of the, the art all right that's kind of i think what we're all here for <laughs> All right, man. So we got our whole setup here, um, and we're starting at the, you know, at the first checkpoint. Yeah. So uh, we start out with Luther here. You know, he's it's this monologue of him talking about how he's been shot in the chest, and he's just staring at the bullets, and he's talking about how what he's about to do is impossible, and he just proceeds to uh, push the bullets straight out of his body like straight up terminator style yeah and, and like and like for reference this is what the first page of the this is the very first page yeah. of the book this is yeah. how we're introduced to luther <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and He's so just yeah eating bullets first page right yeah. yeah and and literally just like all right i'm cool because if you scroll down he just like he can it says that he can pretty much will his muscles to do like whatever he wants them to do and we get this beautiful uh, spread that's about to come up on the next page of why he's in this situation and why he's even sh shot in the first place and bleeding like everywhere. Right. And you see the bullets just plopping out of him. And he, I love this, his line, he says, I know that, th that that's impossible and I know that I can do that. I can't do this, but I have certain talents. And if you just click on the page. The, the next one? Yeah. Yeah, cool. This is it oh no you click on the go back uh to the first tab and then just uh -huh. click on the actual page itself to the first tab that we were on where he's yeah, yeah just click that page in the middle literally okay. click the picture there you go oh yeah there we go yep so you get this awesome page of just this brutal damage that he's just totally unleashed <laughs> on these guys. Just, I one of my favorites is the guy just hanging from the ceiling, just literally been stuffed into the ceiling. You know, I like the dude that has his like fist or foot stuffed through his like face. Yeah, on the couch. Yeah, right. Yeah, just <laughs> swallowing his own arm. Yeah. You got it, it's funny uh, in that bottom right picture that guy's getting kicked in the nuts so hard that he's actually puking out his balls it's it's insane uh, yeah and again like this is what page two or three this is the second page of the yeah. book <laughs> <laughs> and this, so it's this like, is it's the, like this i haven't read a picture. comic in forever and he's like yeah you should be luther strode i'm just like first two pages like yeah this is gonna be fun this is gonna yeah be fun. and this was this this picture right here was this was the picture in my comic book shop that was up on the wall in the pencils and the black and whites and that's when i was like what is what the hell is that <laughs> like, yeah right yeah so um and now you can click on the next tab and and so we get a quick flashback to um kind of luther's life before we find him in this situation he's here with his best friend pete and uh they're talking about how he wants to impress girls basically and and basically at this moment in time luther's just this scrawny little bitch you know the typical like high school like nerd that like doesn't have an ounce of muscle he wears glasses he gets bullied but uh if you scroll down on this page a little bit you'll see he ordered something in the mail a little like workout plan called the hercules method and, and, and... so like this is a pretty standard like trope right and like arc for right and that's and that's like one of the points that the story's making like they want you they like are kind of poking fun at that just to kind of like give you like a quick explanation into like his powers but i think like honestly 
it, they what it really goes into what the story behind this book is really about i think you know is that was one of the things that drew me in so much to this like story was the lore of like what's this book is really about and uh so if you click on the next page we see that luther begins to study this book and practice what's in the book and it's all about you know mind over matter and like meditation and you know being one with yourself and and you know it's so funny because he's reading like the excerpts from it and he's just like jesus christ this is so stupid like he you know he doesn't fucking understand like why he's even doing it like if it's even gonna work this one's good he's doing like this terrible wide push-up with his glasses falling off it's just like the ultimate like you are just epitome <laughs> of nerd and scrawny at the same time do you think exactly do you, do you think that like this early like origin story is consequential like it's great like setup but like look at where we started and like you look at like to your point like they're poking fun at this like very classic story arc of like you know loser dude who that has no ability to get girls in his scrawny wants to get the girl like it's been done a million times over a thousand times yeah is it just like is like the conceit that like we know we need this so that you understand why luther is luther but really this portion of the story doesn't hold a lot of weight to what we're trying to get across right exactly we what we're more what we find out more as the story goes along is like luther says that it's really like you know he says that it's about getting girls but in reality like we find out that he had an abusive father and right. you know it really comes down to him wanting to protect his mother like which in itself is kind of tropey too but like right. at the same time they they do try to strike deeper emotional chords to kind of be like yeah it is like that but there's a reason for it being like that that's a little more a uh, little more than just getting the girl yeah got it and right. then if you click the next page just or click on that click on that image sorry we'll go to kind of see what's working in the backgrounds of uh of everything yeah this is a wild thing so it's like you're introducing evil by a thing that like eats its own fucking tooth and spits it out yeah he we get this nice uh and this is this stuff always makes you cringe teeth stuff always makes you cringe but he literally yeah. pulls his own tooth out with his tongue and spits it uh, like a speeding bullet and if you click on the image and go to the next page you see where that lands <laughs> yeah and it like just it blows a hole through the tooth head <laughs> yeah and we see this obviously very dapper man mr clean with a beard man standing there uh talking to these nice fellas that are chained up to these stone pillars and wrapped up very mysterious very very cultish and <laughs> uh what we obviously the uh this character here is conversing with them and is sort of an underling to these these guys that are chained up and right. uh, it isn't it isn't some weird bondage thing there's a reason that these guys are chained up there, there's a point there's a point in this in, in this so early on where you're kind of just like i don't know what the hell this is but it's super jarring you know what i mean because right. like like Luther's still kind of like innocent and like almost has like that angelic vibe with the long blonde hair type right. shit. Hasn't like yeah. done anything, and you just see this dude spitting a tooth out across the room. You yeah, know? blowing a hole in somebody's yeah. head. And like the emergence of the automatopoeia starts coming in super early, and it's just like epic and like setting a tone in conjunction with this really dark fucking mummified vibe. But like it's a stark contrast in terms of getting like nestled into the origin story. You know what I mean? Like it's like like they don't watch you there long you know right no not at all it's it's a great like tease here of like what the fuck is going on especially right. how you see right here in this box in the bottom right where the, our our fellow here says that he's located a candidate that that is uh that's got certain talents with great and then obviously if you go to the next page it's gonna say talent but uh because they do that so much of the story i love it but um so we kind of get that like mystery angle of like what's going on and this is actually uh we kind of this is where we first kind of see the result of luther's so-called training going yeah, yeah. effect he's starving he's eating breakfast like munching it for his mom if you like hey, go to the next one i love this he begins to get like pretty much almost like a, a spider sense basically where he begins to yeah. see things Reflexes, like, like matrix like right? 
he sees he sees the moves ahead you know he know he can see what's going to happen before it happens and he catches the plate like before she can before it drops so he begins to kind of like he's beginning to see things differently and uh it's a result of the book so uh essentially to kind of jump a little forward to kind of get into the gritty nitty of like where the book is taking it uh kind of get all the trope stuff out of the way obviously luther begins to experience some changes and his best friend who we saw earlier suggests that uh he should try his hand at superheroing and uh we're going to the next tab we're gonna go yeah we're gonna go to uh the next tab four three and uh so while he is out doing this superheroing our fine dapper dinner, dapper gentleman actually decides to show up and uh introduce himself it's about time that luther gets to know like what's really going on and get these mysteries revealed so at this point luther's beating up like a drug lord and or a, a drug dealer and so the librarian is his name comes in obviously swole and <laughs> i think we have just... to take a time out wait wait Ayo, can we take a time out because yeah like we just jumped from luther fucking getting cat-like reflexes and like having you know a couple uh you know mini popeyes to all of a sudden this dude's got a mask on fucking blood splattering it and we have the librarian here for a second you know what i mean so i yeah. do think it's worth noting that like luther gets fucking yoked <laughs> yes <laughs> uh well that's that's actually about to happen uh um, yeah i mean like so luther begins to yes very experience things way more extreme than just like the uh he begins to see people's muscles it's actually we'll see in the next uh the picture when you click on the image the beating that's about to go down where luther it really goes to show that luther's just this like boy basically that uh you know needs to really kind of adapt himself to what he's really getting himself into and you can see that frame down in the bottom left where he's just pure just muscle and that's like what doing this hercules method teaches you to see things how they really are and it uh, it's it unlocks like a, a a kind of awareness that every it's it's really cool everybody can do it but only certain people have an extreme amount of talent to unlock like this potential yeah so they're like we see these muscles early on in like that first page i believe and it's kind yeah. of like constantly this theme that like it just pops up like reminding you that like this is the reality like it's just like muscle and meat you know what i mean right exactly that's so funny that you say that because that's how they re they relate it like everybody is the meat and they are the butchers like that, mm. that you know that's what exists in the world that's all it is and uh it's uh it's it's awesome as we go to um so they have this little scrap and this is where it gets to kind of the awesome part if you go to the next tab uh the librarian obviously lays down that ass whooping and he tells he tells luther uh i quite like the mask very intimidating i'm sure we'll add the right soup con of terror to your victims so why don't you ask me a question you really want to know the answer to and luther asks him why did you send the book try again mr strode why did you pick me let me tell you a story mr strode and this is uh if you go to the next page when you click on the image this is what always really drew me into the story and uh a, a big hit for me because we finally get to see the big bad in all of his glory mm. and we go back to cain and abel and uh you get the librarian narrating the scene murder is natural murder has been there from the beginning murder is our first instinct for lack of a better term or for murder for lack of a better term and you get that uh awesome picture of him just rocking yeah literally putting the rock through abel's face uh and you click on the next page murder is good and we see kane in like his true form basically with those black and red eyes and that, the next frame murder makes us strong murder makes us wise murder makes us powerful showing him just essentially ascending into like godhood from this it shows us what is possible and how to survive and to summon the true strength from within and to see things how they truly are so you just get like the insane insane art of cain living through his life of just 
death and to I, just I feel like this death. is when like Trad Moore just like goes off. Yeah, this hundred percent. Yeah, because like just... each one of these are just like insanely iconic type of illustrations that are like making a very specific point of like. I, I think what you're saying is so striking because it's like as someone who was a first time reader, this like almost like stood at like a, as like a mini book with it like it was a mini story within the story and like its illustration had like a subtly different design language but at the same time like there's a lot of similarities between like Kane and Luther like visually right. you know what I mean exactly. I think that that's very intentional but the coloration of this is very like it's like regal and vibrant and mm -hmm. it's almost like making the red of blood like blending with the horizon to like make it almost okay and beautiful right and right. i don't know if i'm going way deep on this shit but like that's kind of like it's like a very different vibe and it's a very like it just has this moment where it stands out and you have to take notice of like this is the root of what we're going to be talking about as this story unfolds Right. No, you're 100 percent right with that. Uh, I've read theories like books on like how comics are written and, and all of that shit is intentional of what you just said. Like that red is meant to be with the red. It's all driven like to drive like the point of what they're depicting in the story. You know, like we see in that top frame, like, you know, Kane's just like porky pined. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> with yeah. spears and like he's not even like flinching and it's so crazy everything that you can take from just that one frame there he's got bodies all around him he's got yeah. a whole entire army around him and he's just like let's go you yeah. know and then you, you like if you scroll down like the frame of him just like it's i love how he's using <laughs> just his hands to yeah. like he's I just mean, using his bare hands let's just wait 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 let's just look at like this and then the next two frames yeah you know what i mean yeah it's it's in it's yeah it's the yeah. calming before the storm you know it's mm. just like the, the those last moments before he just like pops it's got this off like it's just... god of war vibe to it you know what i mean yeah. mm -hmm. i love how he's just like literally walnut cracking that one guy's skull with his arm you know just like yeah like a watermelon just, yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> exactly so uh and then if you go to the next page yeah, Mike was saying insane. it's like 300. Um, I think yeah. he was talking about this up here. That's exactly that top one is exactly the vibe I got. It was it's like a, it's like a almost like more stylized, beautiful version of 300 because that blood font that they use for everything is like. Yeah. The other part problem with that has been like it's been, just like completely farmed out and aped by right. like everybody trying to do some cool macho shit. Just uses like the 300 type treatment. You know what I mean? Right. So, but like yeah. this is a cool refined way of doing it in my opinion yeah no exactly it's yeah. it's 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 definitely just portraying its point for people that are used to like that kind of thing and giving you that like feeling of unstoppableness it's like it's awesome and then yeah. like um but then in like the if you go to click on the image and go to the next page like we see him like retiring from his uh combat days and it's saying you know knowledge collected knowledge perfected knowledge passed down and we see that picture of jack the ripper you know reading the method basically and then we get the picture of where are you getting jack the ripper here that's no. jack the ripper right there but like that's just the thing that you know yeah i mean he's got the classic jack the ripper look like he's killing a woman it's obviously taking us through a trek through time here like we see at the top kane is still in ancient times while writing this and you know it's saying but this is like requiring a custom. mythology understanding and like his history about well, it. what's what's all they're not being like this is kane and this is abel and this is jack the ripper like you're well they are saying that that's kane and they do state true, that true. kane is still alive but right, um right. and this is pretty mysterious. quick but spoiler i mean spoiler alert wise like that that is for 100 percent confirmed jack the ripper yeah right okay. and uh but what's what what is awesome is like the series series goes on you find that like all these myths that you've heard of these great warriors and feats of strength they all knew this method uh the the final book opens up with samson versus the philistines killing mm -hmm. a thousand philistines with the jawbone like it's awesome like so mm -hmm. it's like you know it's going into like samson knew like the hercules method and knew this method into what cain had taught and that's why he was able to kill a thousand philistines like so right. it's like all they do cover a lot of those you know heroes that you've heard at throughout of legend 
so um but yeah like that it, so obviously uh what you can gather from this is where we go from here is the uh librarian wants luther to join kane and his pack of chained up and wrapped up boys <laughs> and uh you know they they are essentially they can't be too loud they're allowed to go out every once in a while and have their little slang fest but they like the reason that they're wrapped up and chained like that is because they're they they're not allowed out anymore because they're too out of control they'll just kill everybody if they're not chained up and bind to like a stone right. pillar so obviously you know the librarian is like i want you to join us and we get the classic no from luther and then the whole entire force just comes down on him and it's just him versus them and uh that's yeah. kind of where the the two next stories go are him taking on the rest of the the clan and it's uh it's super awesome it's unbelievably action-packed as you can see they have no qualms in showing people being ripped apart and there is a lot of that uh for sure so <laughs> yeah. it's like it's a... the, the, the best part about it is like it, it's funny because they have like those kinds of like uh intros like like almost like a note from the editor if you were a letter from the editor right. um and they kind of like, you know, as you get into it, will like ground certain things and tell you backstory. And I think that like one of the things that they do at one point that I really liked is like, I forget who it was that was writing it, the author, his name, but he's basically like, I don't like things that like try to over explain themselves. You know what I mean? He's like, we don't need to go into the minutia of like trying to create things that and make them like unintuitive when they're in, when they should be intuitive. And so from a story art perspective, I think he thinks sticks to that really well. The thing that I think is really funny is like how intentionally he tries to make sure that he's using um, like violence and calibrating it. And like what we've seen already intuitively looks like it would calibrate in a way that is like, yeah, dude, like we get it. Like this is going to be fucking crazy, but there's levels to this shit like crazy dude, levels yeah, to this shit it really is like when you don't think like just when you think you've seen it all they just take it to a new extreme yeah you're just like jesus christ and they even say that like in one of the issues they're like we're gonna have to turn it up a notch and you're kind of like like what like how yeah. is that even possible at this point and then like you start to see you're like oh shit like they really did that yeah uh, yeah they don't, they don't pull any any uh punches at all there's uh one issue in the last one you talk about reading the uh the author letters it's funny because we do get a, a bad guy that he fights that's just all russian he's just a russian and like he in in the whole entire book his uh he he speaks in russian and they never offer a translation for it ever so, Wait, what? so i had to like he speaks like the the text here I'll, it's I'll just in it russian up. and it's you in have russian. to go and translate the shit I had so you're to basically like, taking like Russian 101 as you're reading this comic. I had to like wait. Oh shit! I don't know if it'll if you'll be able to see it, but I had to like wait until like somebody online like basically translated it because like I couldn't I couldn't like get a translation of it like and I and he even in the next letter issue like wrote a letter and was like yeah he was basically saying this and I was like I don't want to know what he basically said like I want to know word for word like what he was saying like it's a lot of fucking dialogue it's weird <laughs> that i mean first of all it's dope that you took the initiative to figure that out and it's also kind of like cool that they did that you know what i mean like i like yeah. when people like creatives like put those easter eggs in and they know that like two percent of people are going to look that shit up and it might be completely lost but like if you do look it up there might be something really worth your while you know what i mean right yeah 100 um, percent but yeah, I went on that's... Google Translator and like went to Russian and was like punching keys on the keyboard to try to figure out what letters were. Well, we know we know from Spanish class at UT that that shit does not work. I've really written yeah. some crazy pa papers just Google translating shit. Yeah, no, it's. Uh, I can't it's imagine funny. how Russian would work. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, so I think I think. To be fair, right? Like, what part of this is me being open about the fact that, like, I'm new to some of this stuff and you're putting me on. Yeah. I've gotten a little bit further and, like, I didn't get all the depth of the, what you just gave me in reading it. And maybe it's because of the way I was reading it. I had the digital version, and but I was, like, really enjoying Luther and the illustration, per se. The, mm -hmm. the, the story of, like, these guys all being the mummies and being, like, contained by Kane and like them being basically like the fucking hit squad of like badasses that just shred people uncontrollably. I didn't yeah. realize it was like that. 
Like, I felt like I was still waiting now, for some explanation, but maybe you're giving me some stuff that's foreshadowing that comes yeah, later. Yeah, I kind of dipped into a lot of the lore that's revealed in the second part of the story. Like, you get you get a lot of the story in the second part of kind of, like, what's going on with, like, Kane's, like, murder cult and, like, uh, what kind of everybody's role is in that cult. And then the third kind of really, like, hits home with the story as, like, terms of, like you get to see kind of like the extent of everything and obviously we get the big bad final showdown with you know yeah obviously the, the original og murderer i'm more interested in continuing knowing that like basically kane is the tony soprano or the fucking you know of the family you know what i yeah. mean like, yeah. I'm more interested now in continuing knowing that, like, oh, like, there's, like, other characters I have to understand, like, what their role is in this whole thing and, like, why Luther and, like, what ends up really happening. And because there's a lot of twists and turns already early on that you know right. that, well, they're not trying to be facetious and, like, unintentional. They're overly intentional. And so, like, you just know they're going to go to a level of depth, but, like, take you to the right place and not waste your fucking time is what I gather. Right. Yeah, no, it's... uh it definitely we get to see uh it what's what's really cool about it is each part of the story uh there's a five-year time gap so part two takes place five years after part one and part three takes place five years after part three so there is like time gaps that you get story filled in and like uh some some new characters get introduced you, you know it's uh it's it's a great great ride I'm I definitely, so, I definitely think that yeah, number part two is probably my favorite of all three parts, for sure. One sec, I'm getting hot. I'm just gonna get comfortable because we probably got a couple minutes left. Word. <sighs> um. Right. Yeah. Hell yeah. That's. Um. <laughs> yeah, that's my favorite. <laughs> Um, I, so we're at the end of this little review, right? Or yep. do you have more to go? I think that no, this, we're, we're thin. yeah, I think, I don't know, man, like you just further sold me on continuing with this story. How do you feel about where we go from here in terms of, you know, next steps and like next stuff that we want to read? Do we want to stay with Luther? Uh, yeah, I mean, we can, we can definitely stay with Luther, uh, if we want to continue out this series, if you're personally interested, uh, we can book club it out and, you know, discuss part two next week. Uh, if anybody had like questions, then, you know, we can always make the recommendation on where to get the book, uh, maybe direct them towards their nearest local comic book shop. Um, I own the complete series. It's all three parts, uh, in one, um, but you can get it broken down into its individual three parts. Uh, so, you know, you can pick it up part by part. But when I was in the comic book shop, I would always give that first part to people. And I'd be like, I guarantee if you read this tonight, you'll be back tomorrow for part two. And tons of people would always be like, yeah, man, like, dude, had to instant. Like, I wouldn't even see them. And I'd be like, yo, how'd you like the first thing of Luther Strode? And they'd be like, yeah, I had to come back and buy the rest of it. Like, it was yeah. that's good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um... <clears throat> So if anybody does have an opinion in the chat, if we should continue with Luther or yeah, not. I mean, we can do Spawn. Uh, for us, uh, you know, nostalgic 80s lovers, they just did Transformers vs. Terminator. Uh, issue 1 just dropped, so we could dive into that. I'm always down for that. We could read right. that live. Um, or whatever. I'm, You know, we could definitely continue down Luther. Maybe uh, we could do a read-along. We can do what. It, I'm down for whatever, man um so jesus i'm losing my voice on here um but uh mike was requesting spawn yeah. um i don't know what the hell that means torres do the one with the human size holes he says and he said i'm not sure if it's the lsd hitting but that was riveting or he's riveted by all that <laughs> and if it took lsd for it to be riveting i'm fucking down with that because episode one is the it's still trial run but I think I think Ayo did a good job of fucking bringing us in on that because he just I, I read what we just went through and he gave me even more talking through it, which is like just helpful because now the level of appreciation is greater where like I'm totally down to continue reading Luther. Um, 
but I do know that we have some other things on the docket that we are thinking about reading soon. Do you yeah. want to talk about some of those? Uh, yeah, as I said, um, we're going to do Transformers um, vs. Terminator is one I'm personally very hyped about. Yes. Um, and then one of the ones I wanted to do kind of just uh, from a Marvel standpoint was uh, the Thanos wins story, which is one of my favorites. You put me on that a minute ago. Yeah, and that's when, I still have that. I know I need that. That that they don't sell that cover anymore. I want that back. I got but, it. Don't uh, worry, it's in I the know, office. I'm going to get it on Monday. Um, right. I we should <laughs> definitely do uh, yeah. Thanos wins. Definitely. That that has uh, just for people that don't know, the, it's just exactly as the title sounds. It's basically the story of if Thanos won it all, if he if he took the cup and and ruled ruled over everything and it is one of the best stories that marvel's ever come out with and features some of the most overpowered super strong you'll never see anybody stronger characters in it <laughs> so maybe yo maybe what we should do is we should create something on social and we'll put it out on stimulus and we'll promo next week's show and we should put danos Luth, uh legend of luther and then we can also put in um transformers transformers and just let people pick and i'd say that we just go with whoever we can get to whatever selection where people want to participate the most yeah hell yeah you with that uh, yeah definitely down for that you know i love love this stuff so yeah this has been (laughs) fun dude um what else is going on what else is going on because oh yeah tomorrow we're gonna do a fucking big stream aren't we yeah we're doing final fantasy 7 tomorrow gonna finally punch some holes in that game make some progress i've been on the pirate boat Garrett's too long my fucking CDs. boy dude dude he is so awesome in the game it's so, I, that's it's the so one great. thing i saw you streaming that i thought was amazing when like i saw you playing with fucking cloud and barrett i was like okay like it's early on it's just them they're going up against everybody barrett looks fucking hard yeah dude i there was one thing i noticed uh when i won one of the fights because you know now everything's like live action battle it's not the turn base anymore but uh when i killed like an enemy barrett was straight up just like da 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 and i was like fuck yes dude yeah, that is yeah. like the shit that you need yeah and what got me into like wanting to do that so bad is i've been watching a lot of like the new resident evil on twitch and uh-huh. like it's so good because it's like Resident Evil's always been one of those games that's great to watch. Like, it's amazing for yeah. Twitch because it's like watching a movie. But yeah, like, the atmosphere is phenomenal. Yeah, and, and like, the streamer's scared and you're kind of scared, but like, <laughs> nothing's fucking better than Final yeah. Fantasy because of how expansive it was. Were you a fan of 8? Yeah, that was Squall, right? Yeah, I that was Squall with the eight. Blade. And the Lionheart? Yeah, it was great. Eight, eight, 7, 8, and 10 are the best ones. Titus? Yeah, Blitzball. Blitzball was the best mini game of all time. Eight had the card game that was pretty dope, though. Yeah, no, eight was definitely good. God, I haven't played that game probably since PlayStation One, to be honest. Ult- Ultimeshia. Yeah. Throwback, dude. bro. Ragnarok, the yeah. ship. That was the hardest ship. Was the Ragnarok was the guaranteed? Best. Sin was the bad guy in that one, right? Yeah. 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 It yeah. Was yeah. Ul- you, it was, was Ultimeshia, Ultimeshia, and then Sin. Right. It was the yeah. final final. Because that was the first yeah. three disc. Right. So yeah, no, because no, no, Final Fantasy VII was three or four. It was four. Four, yeah, no, no. Final yeah. Fantasy was four. Eight was three. Nine was trash. And then, and then, then they, ten was then the they never made PS2, multi-disc. right? Yep, yep. Yeah. God, I remember and, when that first came out. Yeah, and like the fucking they exploded the Blitz, Blitzball Arena and shit like that. That was oh, so yeah. fire. We should we could honestly spend a stream just like watching the epic cinematics that like they did back in the yeah. day. Oh, 100%, dude. It's so funny. Remember when we watched those cinematics and we're like, damn, I can't wait till video games look like that. Now video games look <laughs> better than well, this. The, well, also the crazy thing is like if you watch the cinematic now, you're kind of like, yeah, like it's pretty good for the time. But then you get back to the regular gameplay and you're like, what the fuck is this? Yeah, it's seamless. But you never questioned it back in the day, ever. No, seamless. Yeah. yeah. It's, it, it, what it looks like now is what it looked like to us back then. <laughs> Yeah, hundred percent. <laughs> and then the crazy thing is now, like for seven, it's all cinematic the whole way through, right? Like the gameplay is. Yeah, cool. it's all in-game. In-game graphics is what they call it. Yeah, that's crazy. So yeah. tomorrow we'll do uh, Final Fantasy VII stream. Friday yep. night, late night, we'll do that. Um, late, late. Probably gonna start like eleven o'clock, and I think we're gonna yeah. try to go to like 
excuse me, 2 a.m. or so, um, but like at least put in two hours and get like good portion of the story. Probably do a little bit of like, you know, feasting and kind of like le- leveling up a little bit to make sure that you're not trash going out in the story mode because you gotta go and like Dude, battle. It's, you gotta battle. It's, it's crazy now. It's like you actually have to like be good at like fighting. You know, wait, 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 I don't even know anything about the new mechanics. It's like God of War style almost. Like you gotta like slash your sword and like do heavy attacks and light attacks, and then like you bring. So up it's not turn based. So you can play it turn based. You can play like you have the option when you first start the game to play it like in what they're calling like the classic mode. So you don't have to do all those mechanics. You just like basically just pick it out like you would a turn base. But I'm trying it with this new system. I really want to see what it's like. And it's been a lot of fun. Like once you don't get me wrong, it takes a ton of time to get used to. But right. like once you get in the flow of it and get grooving, you kind of like get used to it. And it's really tight and fun to use because you can swap back between everybody to set up like crazy attacks, you know, like cross slashing with like cloud and then switching to and like just comboing on them while cloud is slashing it's it's good stuff that's uh i, I i'm worried about that are you it's, like I, I mean i guess like you're you're very adaptable you know what i mean yeah, yeah you bruno know, you was like... not excited about it being that way either but he Shout was gonna play, he, he was gonna play it through um just turn base but then last second was like I'm has, he, has he played it all yeah yeah, Bruno's further than me. He's like chapter twelve. Oh wow. Yeah, he's killing it. Yeah. That's yeah. All right. Well, then we'll try. It. So, so you're not. Can you switch between turn base and middle of the game? No, I don't think so. Ooh, but I haven't looked. That's a commitment, dude. Yeah, it's it's. I guess it is more dynamic point. and like it is a little like at this stage with where we are with gaming. Like, should we really have turn based games? But there was so much strategy in the turn based game too. Yeah, well, what's nice is, like, say you want to do, like, a move with somebody, like, you bring up the menu, like, the classic menu, like, you want to do a move, and time, like, freezes. So, like, it huh. gives you that time to kind of, like, strategize, like, what you want to do. Like, it's not like you have to be, like, instant, like, all right, I got to launch into this attack. Like, you can slow down time and be, like, pick what you, oh, do I really want to use that? Where do I want to attack? Like, you can do all that. You know, because in some fights you gotta attack like different body parts, not like you know shields and shit like that. That's cool. That's cool. It's yeah. more precision oriented, more skill. Right. Maybe. Yeah. All right. It's cool. Fun. Cool. So. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, yeah, I know. I'm getting hyped though. Um, I've been wanting to do this for a couple of days, and we haven't been able to do it. I actually think I might jump on some fucking Warzone and like just bring the stream back up and just kick it. But I know you're probably not gonna do that. You're gonna go to bed. Think... Um, no, I think I'm gonna hit the 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 high seas. The new the new Sea of Thieves contents out. The new patch came out yesterday, so I actually want to watch that though. It's, it's been getting crazy brutal. It's like all everybody's cutthroat now. Everybody was playing nice, now they're not. Damn, you should stream that. That'd be cool to watch. It's gonna be yeah. more entertaining than me playing Warzone. I mean, like I have good games now and then, but it's gonna mostly be entertaining if I just am going off on the stream and just fucking treating it like i'm talking to rick maybe i should play with rick you should play with rick oh my god play with rick what are you doing i should play with rick and just go wild and just whore colin yeah just trash piles yeah anyway <laughs> yo <laughs> god, we got stories for days on characters yeah. that people yeah. need to know um we some of them are gonna get their own shows <laughs> yeah. um so this was awesome so for next week we will basically so tomorrow we'll go live with some final fantasy 7 we're gonna look to get to two to four hours in get a nice arc uh we'll keep the slot for thursday at right now i think we can actually move it to 10 and move it up depending on if that works for our schedules but it'll be 10 to 11 we'll get let everybody know and i think in advance of that we will start to do a voting system to kind of figure out maybe through ig stories what we're going to read and get getting people along reading with us i think what will be really dope is if we basically started that like as soon as saturday so people could like actually get time to read that thing with us yeah yeah sounds good and we'll uh we'll start trying to reach out to some local shops too and get them kind of on here talking about what's going on with them and how we can get content yeah for sure man dope um this has been good bro um i appreciate you for introducing me to luther i am going to personally finish it out regardless because i fuck with it um good i'm also kind of really hopeful that we start reading transformers terminator together because i'm kind of just like 
and now I love the how fact that you insane this movie. You so fast. You're like, nah, 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 and then within two minutes, you're like, kind of fuck with it. Because <laughs> well, we had a conversation about how these cross pollinations of universes can be very hokey, but then we started like talking about it, and I was like, shit, like if any of them actually did make sense, this it's does make sense. Because if you take right. the humans out of it, it's perfect yeah. marriage. Right. You just let the Terminators kill all the humans. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and there we go. <laughs> right. And we know that Transformers never should be doing movies with humans anyway, because all you're going to get is Megan Fox looking confused and Mark Wahlberg looking <laughs> slow as shit and short and not understanding why he's talking to Optimus Prime and taking away from a movie. And don't and get me started on Michael Bay. We could do four episodes on how much I fucking hate Michael Bay. Yeah, I actually yeah. see people comment that they like Michael Bay on social media, and I'm like, you're probably a Trump supporter. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's like explosions. Like, that's it. He ruined my childhood. I hate the Ninja Turtle movies. I, I hate the Transformers movies. Don't get me wrong. I was super hyped when they were coming out, dude. I, the, honestly, I'll never forget, like, when the second one was coming out. I'm so fucking hyped. And, like, you went to the midnight thing. I didn't get to go to the midnight release. Yeah. And I remember yeah. waking up to your text message just being like, movie fucking sucked. Best part was when Prime died. And I was like, <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> yeah, dude, I'm harsh but, on that, man. But, th but you were right. That was the best part. When he's just taking Megatron, Starscream, and some nobody on by himself. Yeah. Everybody's I mean, dead. so everybody knows what we want to read. We're obviously going to put probably two votes in for the same exact thing. Um, of course, I don't know fun with Michael Mann. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Torres is coming in. How so he had a question. Do you know? Enigma of yeah, Agarara. Agarara? Fault? I don't know. I don't know that one. It sounds like a manga. Is that like a Juntu Itu story? That's what it sounds like to me. I I don't know. <laughs> but he happens but yeah, to sometimes have some crazy, you know, off cuff shit, so I don't doubt that like it's probably comes highly recommended. Maybe we'll put that in the list for the next the next <gasps> round. It is it is Juntu Itu. He's a horror manga. And that's artist. why and that's why you're uh you know, our <laughs> Jedi. Hi. Um, dope man well so I'm hyped for tomorrow I'm hyped to yep. get the stuff out to determine what we're going to read next um, if you guys want to hit us up individually and just you know put some votes in whatever we'll send you guys the graphic and everybody can go and vote on social it'll be on uh, stimulus tv underscore on instagram you can find the link below in the panels um, below I guess this is how they do it in the fucking youtube world they actually point <laughs> the camera so you can see in my panels and I'll put a graphic over the shit I'm not going to take time to do that. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, dude, this has been dope. Uh, excited to keep kicking it. And we will be back Thursday, Thursday. again doing more. All right. All right Sounds good, brother. All right, my man. Peace. Peace.
Yeah.